so this model is a, is a it's a smaller building. I thought it would be a good uh, a good size to use to talk about today. This was a school in the area here that we uh, recently completed a coordination process on. Uh, and so I'm going to go through some of the items that were on that last uh, list and and talk about them a little more a little more specifically in the context of an actual model. Um, so we can see this building. Uh, this building we'll, we'll talk about uh, dividing into areas uh, and what we call digestible chunks. So this building was two floors uh, and it kind of had a natural break in. Uh, into three distinct kind of areas, and I'll, I'll try to highlight them. So we had uh, these kind of three sections of the building here. Uh, we called them area one, two, and three. Uh, and so we did it by area and then also by floor. So we had uh, first floor and second floor, and beyond that we broke them up into area one, Area two, first and second floor, and area three, first and second floor. Now these areas, I think, come out to about 10,000 square feet apiece, just uh, as a point of reference. But they also kind of occurred along some natural breaks in the construction, so this kind of made it uh, uh, kind of natural that it would make sense to break them up into these uh, into these areas. Um, so that was how we broke the model up. Part two was uh, what is included in the model. Um, so you can see, and I'll, I'll walk in a little closer to this, we've included uh, obviously the architecture. Uh, you can see in kind of this reddish color is, uh, is the structure. It was a, it was a steel and a joist structure. Um, we've also got fire protection in red, uh, electrical in kind of that light blue color, uh, and uh, mechanical pipe in uh, kind of the pink, and ductwork in the, in the blue. There's also plumbing. Uh, in, a, in a green color. Uh, the yellow that you see we'll talk about a little bit later but those are actually uh, access uh, space uh, above some of the lights and you'll see it around uh, around like over here some of the mechanical equipment uh, and that actually comes into play uh, later on uh, when it comes to actually maintaining the building that's making sure there's there's space for somebody to actually get up there and do what they have to do. So that's uh, you know what's what's included in the model. So we we talk about you know access space. Obviously, we have to have you know different equipment uh, included. We have to have all of these trades included. Um, you know, if we were if we were missing a trade, uh, it would make this process very difficult. Uh, you know, coordination uh, in the BIM process is something that really only works its best uh, if everyone's on board. Uh, so if we had three trades in, in 3D and one in 2D, it makes it, it very difficult, uh, if not impossible, to, to really see this process through and see it be successful. Uh, so we'll, we'll constantly be pushing to have, uh, to have uh, everyone in 3D uh, for this to, to be effective. Um, next, we're going to talk a little bit about the level of detail required. Um, so that goes to not just what's included in the model, but what a level of detail uh, is, is things shown to. So this is, this is a piece of equipment in the model. This is a fairly high level of detail. Um, so you can see uh, not just the motors, this is a pump setup, um, but some of these, these instruments and, and valves and valve handles. Um, you know, you could you can imagine that uh, you know the handle of this valve uh, wasn't shown. Uh, somebody may be inclined to construct something right next to it, uh, or you know, put a piece of ductwork up against it uh, in a way that, when you construct it in the field, it would quickly become apparent that you couldn't actuate this valve and you really couldn't operate this piece of equipment the way it was intended to. So, things like that. It's it's important to be able to to see that. Um, you know, if you did come across that and that happened in the field, that would, that could be a uh, you know very kind of troubling and, and potentially costly uh, you know mistake that that would have to be uh, you know handled after post coordination. Um, so generally, when we talk about you know level of detail, what, what's included in our model? You know, basically our, our major guidelines are, are you know anything that's not flexible. Uh, you know, we want to show. 
you know, generally uh, that includes, you know, all pipes and conduit. Uh, you know, we generally put up a guideline, I believe, for this building. We did larger than, uh, than one and a half inches. Um, but that can be, you know, differing on, on all different projects depending on what the needs are. Uh, another one that comes up quite often is hangers. Um, you know, hangers or no hangers. Uh, and that really depends on, on the project. In this particular one, uh, you'll notice that there's uh, very few hangers shown uh, except, uh, you know, on assemblies that, that required some, some special systems. Um, we like to see valves uh, for for the reason that uh, that I just explained because they're they're things that have to be maintained and actuated and and have to allow someone to actually get to them uh, once they're constructed uh, and then we talk about access so there's there's access spaces built into this model we can see on uh, on some of these lights that that yellow kind of semi transparent is uh, is an access space so in this case it's access just for installation of those lights they need a little bit of space above them to be able to get uh, uh, the light in there uh, we can see also over here this kind of lighter yellow that's also an access space to be able to get to a, there's a VAV box there so that's uh, blocking out that space so that somebody can actually get in there above the ceiling and and uh, get to that box and, and maintain it the way it needs to be. Um, there's also code required uh, access space around electrical and above electrical panels that, uh, that we'll put in here uh, to make sure that uh, you know we set up kind of a no-fly zone where nobody will go through that, that area. Um, and, and the nice part about actually modeling that space is that we can run clash detections uh, against those spaces, so not just against the, the physical elements uh, that are in the model, so it's not just pipe versus pipe or pipe versus duct, um, you know, we can we can run clashes against the, the access space to see where we're hitting things, where, where somebody needs to, to get in there for maintenance. Um, so getting back to our list here, uh, another thing we had on there, and they're constructing uh, or identifying the coordinate system. Um, so this looks like a nice clean model where everything kind of fits together and it's all in the same place. Um, you know that doesn't that doesn't happen by accident. Um, I can assure you, uh, the the coordinates on this project were were established very early. If we if we just ask people to to draw a model and and uh, you know place it uh, wherever they would like, you know you can you can end up with. Uh, with models all over the place and I uh, you know I can just come in here and, and just kind of quickly move one to show you you know this this is very often what something looks like when you bring it into Navisworks for the first time and it's uh, you know models all over the place and nothing lines up and uh, you know it can be a real struggle to get uh, to get everything into uh, into the same place but it's it's extremely critical when we're when we're talking about clash tolerances of a half an inch or a quarter of an inch, if, if one of these models is off by, you know, a handful of inches, uh, you know, our, our clash detection is no good. So very important to get that set up as early as possible, and then we'll mention that a little bit in a minute. Um, so the next step is constructing the model. So this is Navisworks, um, and and so what is Navisworks? Navisworks is, is a, a model management software. Uh, and so at its heart, it's a model viewer. Uh, I like to describe it as a kind of a PDF viewer. Uh, so if you're familiar with, uh, with Word documents and, and PDFs, uh, you know, you, you would actually create your, your, your models or your Word document elsewhere, and then you would kind of view it in here. So in Navisworks, we can't, we can't do any modeling. We can, we can mark it up. We can move it around. We can cut it. We can section it. We can spin it. Uh, but we can't really edit any of the content that's that's in it. Um, Navisworks' real strength uh, comes in its ability to read many, many file types, so we can have designers uh, and, and subcontractors really drawing in, in whatever program they're comfortable with and then, and then combining it in here. Um, 
and the other, and it also comes with uh, lots of different tools. So in Navisworks, uh, particularly for, for clash detection, we're in coordination, we're interested in the clash detective. Um, but there's also Timeliner, which can be used for scheduling and 4D animations. There's an animator, uh, obviously for animation. There's an, now a, a QTO, uh, an estimating workbooks in, in Navisworks, so we can use that for, for estimating also. Um, part of the key to this is setting it up in a way that's, uh, you know, that's flexible. Um, so that we can we can use this and update this model from week to week, and we not we're not recreating a model uh, every week. We have a clash detection meeting. We're we're using the same one, uh, you know, over and over and over. Um, so there's a few there's a few things that we do to make that to make that possible. One is uh, one is setting up uh, our files. So this is a a partial list of the files that are in this model. Um, there's a total of 25 uh, different files in this model, and you can see that we've we've named them in a way that kind of identifies what they are, what their location is, um, and is fairly generic. And we do that because when we incorporate new models, we just change the file name to this kind of generic name that's already in the model, and then we come in and we hit the refresh button that'll bring all of the geometry from that from that new model in so we're we're not we're not recreating the model week to week we are just simply replacing these files they live in a location on our network uh we're replacing those files with the newer versions uh and then just refreshing uh, what's in there so that we can uh, we can move on with the latest stuff uh, it also comes to color coding. You can see, you know, how nicely we have, uh, you know, the different uh, the different colors represented in here. That that really helps uh, when you're in coordination to see uh, what's what and and who's who. Uh, and uh, we use the the appearance profiler for that. Uh, we set up uh, some search sets and and some colors uh, that we establish at the beginning, and then maintain that that same same color all the way through. So the goal is to make the the up the weekly updates to the models um, as as painless and as quick as as possible, so that we're not uh, spending a lot of time creating models. We're we're spending uh, most of the time, uh, you know, in the hands of the subcontractors, them them modeling, and and hopefully it's a very quick uh, transition into the Navisworks model weekly to to look at clashes. Um, so the coordination process actually takes place with the uh, with the coordination manager uh, and and the clash detective uh, tool in Navisworks. This is the tool as we have it set up in this in this project. So you can see a a fairly standard uh, you know list of clash detections that we run. So these are based on uh, these are based on search sets um, that carry over from week to week and. We will run this uh, and then group these clashes and then go through them uh, weekly in the in the coordination meetings and and track them uh, until they're till they're complete. Um, so clash detective helps us to identify the clashes uh, as we track them. In this particular project, we used uh, viewpoints to to keep track of them. So we've saved viewpoint of clashes uh, with a with a little cloud around it to kind of make it visually a little easier to see, and a little description of the uh, of the clash and and of the clash resolution. So we've got week to week we we save these clashes. Uh, and we also produce a, a report that contains these viewpoints. Um, and then as these are cleared, we clear them off the list and, and proceed to the next week. So that's kind of that, that iterative process that I described. 